Ciao and benvenuti to Untold Italy. I'm Josie. And I'm Katie, and we're here to help you plan your trip to Italy. Between us, we have many years of travel experience, and we want to help you uncover your own, as yet untold stories and adventures in Italy. Each episode, you'll hear practical advice, tips and ideas to help you plan your own trips to the magical land of history, stunning landscapes and a whole lot of pasta. We'll have interviews from experts and focus on local destinations and frequently ask questions about travel in Italy. Thanks for listening and make sure to subscribe to our show. Now let's get started on your regular dose of Bella Italia. Ciao everyone, welcome to Untold Italy and our episode on the beautiful Amalfi Coast. We recorded this episode in February, well before the crisis that is facing our world today. You'll notice that our voices are upbeat and excited and really absolutely thrilled to be able to share with you the Amalfi Coast as we know and love it. We really thought long and hard about releasing this episode. However, there's so many of you that need some hope and wanted to get some escape from the news of the world today. So please bear this in mind as you listen to our episode on the Amalfi Coast highlights. Like all of you, we hope to be there very soon, drinking limoncello and enjoying the beautiful Amalfi Coast sun. So without further ado, let's start this week's podcast. Thanks for listening. Ciao a tutti. Today, let's go to the Amalfi Coast, Katie. Oh, let's go, Josie. I love the Amalfi Coast. I, I, I agree. I think when I think of the Amalfi Coast, I just think of how amazing it is. And just that drive into, for me, into Sorrento. Yeah, well, even Sorrento is not even the Amalfi Coast, actually. No. You know, that's just that's just the bit to Sorrento. But I guess your heart's beating really fast and you're like, oh, this the sea either side, the Tyrrhenian Sea is approaching and you can see maybe Capri in the distance, but you get there and then you go along that really windy road and you get to Positano and that's like, wow. Uh, I just think it's really one of those places where you – I think we've read, we've seen movies. I mean, there's so many movies on that road that, you know, you can see yourself in a sports car with your hair flickering with the scarf behind you, whether it's Audrey Hepburn or whatever it is. And I think I think when we when we drove up and we had the girls with us and um, my husband and I were, were, were coming from Naples to Sorrento because we decided to go to Sorrento because it was easier to get to everywhere – I think you're right. It's that excitement. But then everyone changes. They're more relaxed. And you've got a bit of everything and everyone in that place. I know. And it's just the sunshine and it's the blue sea and those dramatic cliffs and the pretty colored houses. And oh, I just want to go there now. Yeah, I agree. I think so. The main towns are Positano, which is amazing, um, Amalfi and Rivello. I love Rivello up at the top where you can look over everything. Yeah, it's just. Like there's so many little towns along that way and you really need to spend a few days there just to discover them because you could easily, I mean, you could easily spend five days in Positano. That would be a lovely holiday or a vacation, I think. But um, I think each of the towns has its own specific qualities. So maybe let's talk about some of them because that's a question we get a lot is, where should we stay when we go to the Amalfi Coast? And I think I've got a few ideas on what I think um, where people should stay, but you might have some different opinions. So that's well. I think it. I think it depends, right? I think how many times have you been? What have you seen? What do you want? For me, the reason we chose Sorrento um, to stay there was four of us, and we wanted an apartment. Um, and we decided that we wanted to go to Capri, and we also wanted to make it easy if we were going to go by ferry. So mm-hmm. that was an option at that time. So we wanted the easiest way to get to everywhere, and we'd heard during summer that it was easier to get from Sorrento to everywhere. Um, because so let's let's be real, and, and honestly, listeners, this place is busy. It's so busy in summer, and I would say summer starts maybe – end of May through to the end of October, you're going. You're looking at very congested roads. Well, there's only really one big road is the coastal road from Sorrento to the Amalfi Coast and it gets jammed. So I heard someone say last, a few, um, last year actually, that it took, I think, two hours to go 10 kilometers, which is just crazy stuff. So that's why you want to be have access to the ferries. And Sorrento is an excellent base for that, as well as other day trips around the area. So a lot of people do 
choose to stay in, stay in Sorrento and it's a great idea because you can get the ferry to Capri, to Ischia and Proshida, which are two other islands, which I haven't been to, but I'm kind of obsessed with going to, Pompeii and yeah. even Naples. So there's so many options from Sorrento, which is why um, why many people choose to stay there. Yeah, I agree. I think, and again, but now if I went back, we've stayed in Sorrento and probably my husband and I, I, I'm I'm obsessed with Positano. I think that just is amazing and being up there and, and just the atmosphere. So for me, the second trip probably would be around, um, you know, doing the Positano. Um, I have family that have stayed in Amalfi. Um, and again, there's different reasons you go to different places. Yeah. So Positano, the, I mean, from a romance perspective, there's nothing really that can beat it. It's really, it's that view and that scene from the beach that you just look up of these colourful houses that look like they're tumbling into the sea and they're all, it's just a just a very emotional experience just for me just to talk about it now but you it, it's like nothing you've really ever seen before and it's a very beautiful place but guess what it's also really really steep and a lot of the hotels are like quite a way up the hill so you get those amazing views of the sea and uh, I think if you had very small children or that you know toddlers yeah. or or if you had some mobility issues positano probably isn't the place for you because it would be very challenging because it really the only way to get down to the sea is to walk and they do have like some luggage carts that can get these cute little yeah. luggage carts but honestly it's it's probably not worth it so yeah and i think again when we talk broadly i mean the two of us are quite mobile so when we talk broadly around what is it that you're looking for you know this is what we're here to sort of help you so mobility is one sorrento is easy to get around lots of restaurants easy to to walk around um something we did in sorrento as well where where my family loved to sit by a pool and have a nice relax when we're on holiday Day. but um what that's a little bit harder because some of the five-star hotels have obviously pools and cabanas um but they have beach clubs and it's not sand beach clubs that we went to it was actually sort of um it's out it, it, they sort of build them out and you sit on this um above the water um so it's really really interesting and you buy your beach bed um i think it was something like 50 euros you'd have to check because they're different different and then you would order food and there was a cost to that it is very expensive i, I must admit my husband um was going oh my gosh there's four of us there and it's really really expensive but it's one of those things again we've talked in many our podcasts that sometimes you do things because it's the once in a lifetime thing and so for for us we loved it it was it was amazing yeah it's quite interesting for us as australians beaches are all free in australia and you can take your drinks to the beach um and what have you but over there it's not it's it's not the same so they have spaggia libre which is the free beaches but then they have these beach clubs and the beach clubs are if you're used to not paying to go to the beach you, you need to start getting used to it if you go to italy but i was a bit skeptical at first but then I decided I love them because <laughs> there's nothing quite like having a cappuccino or a glass of wine brought to your lo- lovely lounge chair by the, the, the beach. And the other thing about Italian beaches is that there's a, they're rocky. So we're yeah. used to sandy beaches in Australia and uh, we, it was a little bit unusual to get used to rocky beaches, but I quite like them as well because I don't like getting sand in my swimming costume. <laughs> <laughs> so I think um, so I think it's it's again look at what your family like to do, you know. Um, I get I get a bit seasick so when I have to go on ferries and the boat to Capri I take my seasickness tablets only because it's I, I'm I'm quite sensitive to the motion sickness. But um, also booking we need to talk about the the blue grotto. Um, and actually booking the Capri um, yep. Grotto because I, I to be honest, um, I did it when I was thirteen. Um, when I went back four years ago, I wasn't I wasn't planned and I didn't book it. It wasn't something I think I I thought oh no we'll just see because we didn't know whether the kids and we wanted to do it. But if you want to do it, you need to to get it. Yeah. Organized. So Capri is one of the best day trips to do from the Amalfi Coast or Sorrento and it is like we did it a couple of years ago and it's one of the best days of my life so far. We had an amazing time. We actually took a private, semi-private boat tour over there. So that was about eight people mm. on board and it was a smaller boat 
and we what we did was um, we they picked us up from our accommodation and they took us down to the pier and we got on the boat and then they we zipped off to Capri and you can just see it coming at you in the distance oh, and it's beautiful. just Oh, it's amazing. And it was um, just after the first Wonder Woman, recent Wonder oh. Woman movie was was uh, released and it's actually shot there. So that was the the mythical island where the, the – oh, I can't remember the Amazonians or whatever they are, you know, those women, that's where they lived. Anyway, so we get there and you, you do a lap of the, of the island on this little boat and it was amazing. Now, we didn't get to go in the Blue Grotto because – you can't actually predict if the sea no. or the weather is going to let you. So the only way you can get to the Blue Grotto is, is when you get to Capri, you uh, you have to organise a separate boat tour. But anyway, it didn't matter because we just kept going around the island and we went through – our boat was small enough to go through the middle of the Faraglione oh, yeah, Rocks. It's beautiful. <laughs> and did you know that if you – Get a kiss from some from someone when you go through the middle. That they'll be your, but they'll be yours forever. Well, my little son, he was three at the time. He gave me a little kiss, so that was cute. I've got a photo of it. It's just beautiful. And I think um, I, I agree, Capri. We did the same, semi private. What I love also, I don't know if you did it, but you you actually could stop and swim. Uh, which is which is amazing. So wherever it wasn't, you didn't feel that you were under time pressure to get somewhere or do something. So which is what we loved as well. Yeah. Well, we went in April, so it was a little bit cooler. Okay. Um, but yeah, we in summer they do stop. But I think um, if you can, I think this is one again. It's one of those splurge things, right? Mm-hmm. You you will never regret it. And as I said, it was one of the it is one of the best days of my life. And we what we did was we kept going in and out of these little grottos. There's oh, lots beautiful. of them around the island. So if you, even if you, if you miss out on the Blue Grotto, don't worry too much. You still have an amazing time. Uh, but the thing to note is you can get over to Capri by ferry and you can do a boat tour, which is on a big boat, and it's much cheaper. But, my goodness, I'll never forget this big boat trying to, like, with 50 people hanging off the side trying to take photos and not being able to get as close as we were because we had the smaller boat. So I, f- I find... Uh, I felt a bit, you know, I felt very lucky that we were on this small boat so we were able to go duck in and out of the little coves and stop for, you know, our lunch and our swims as, or if you swims if you wanted to as well. So it was a little bit of a different experience and that I think you need to uh, think about that. The co- If you're on a budget, absolutely, and you and you can't stretch, but if you can stretch, I would – Personally, I would go private. I would. I would get. Yeah, a, I agree. I get a private boat next time I go. I just. I just thought it was magical. I yeah, loved it. I, I agree. We we um tend to do private boats wherever we can, purely because of the fact that it's at your leisure. I think for me, you know, we're busy um mm-hmm. doing everything, and when we when we get to Italy, we want to feel like we're just relaxing and really find that time. So, definitely private boat. The other thing we do private. Oh, do we want to talk more about Capri? Sorry, I, th- I, was I gonna, think we I, should. I, we get so excited that I want to go to another, <laughs> another place. So let's stick with Capri at this point. Katie. So what did you do after you um, got off the boat? Did you go up? Yeah, so we went up and had the had the walk. I mean, yeah. and then we bought a gelati. Mm-hmm. Um, we had, we stood and, and had a look around. Um, and, and really, we take things a little bit slower when we're on holiday. So um, it was really just soaking up that capri the people the shopping um we're a little we love a bit of a shop um so just the unique shopping destination as well they've got very um bespoke stuff that they they have in there and and just even some of their luxury shops it's capri is you know an amazing place to just even go in i i I use some of these luxury shops as a like a bit of a museum so i'll walk in and out just to see how they present and what they are I know. Well, I've got one of my favourite perfumes from there. It's called it's um, Fiori di Capri, and it's by Carthusia, and it's one of those really nice um, perfume shops there. But I just every time I put it on, I'm like, oh, Capri, here I come. <laughs> I love it. And um, one of the things that we did up there was actually go and visit the monastery. Oh, yeah. And um, it, it, not very many people go there, but the views down to those rock formations are just incredible. Like. There was hardly anyone there. Everyone sort of rushes up to the gardens where mm. it's quite up high, and um, but we didn't. We went to these um, 
this little uh, monastery and the views were stunning. But you can also go, and I'm not really good with heights, but you can also go on a gondola. Gondola, yeah. Right up looks, to the, I've not done that, but it looks amazing. It does. But for me, I'm not good with heights, so that was enough. <laughs> so after that, yeah, you if you're going on a day trip from Sorrento, and this it really is a full day, so you don't really plan anything else, then you go back down the hill and you, you know, wander along the seafront to Marina Grande and it's just, it's a lovely, it's just a gorgeous place, Capri. And I think also remember that Capri, it is expensive. So when we look at food to eat, it's one of those once in a lifetime experiences. That's the way we look at it when we got there. Mm. Um, Because again, you know, just sitting there, having a plate of pasta, having a bit of a wander, the day trip, the whole day is about going on the boat and having a having uh, you know stopping where you can then get to capri have that one go out and have a a bit of a wander around and have your lunch and you know find a nice gelato shop and have you know that and you know see the monastery or do the gondola rides and then come back and then you know in for us in the middle of summer it was hot so you just you get back on the boat you go for a bit of a swim um and by the you know late afternoon you're back in sorrento yeah but i think um just it's just one really just do it and in fact i would love to just stay on capri that's my dream as well i really would love to just for a few nights and just soak it all up there's some amazing little restaurants and um there's a australian restaurant there i'll have to dig out the name and put it in the show notes but um there's a lady australian lady that's married an italian guy and they organize picnics oh wow at at certain beaches etc but um, enough of Capri because I could talk about it forever. But um, maybe just go back to Positano because there's quite a few things to do in Positano that are fantastic. And as Josie mentioned in Sorrento, they have the beach clubs, but they have beach clubs all along the coast there. And they range in level of uh, luxury. <laughs> so at the very high end, you can expect, you know, very exclusive, uh, beautiful service, you know, the whole white towels and luxury. However, at the other end of the scale, there's more rustic experiences. And I want to tell you about one, which is called Da Adolfo. And this one you pick up, it's by a little private boat that you get down by the pier in Positano and you take this boat and it takes you to a private beach where there's a seafood restaurant and they've just got a little private beach in a little cove and this restaurant and they just serve up pretty rustic yummy dishes and you can stay there all afternoon oh, eat your amazing. lunch and go swimming okay you i booked i'm yeah. going this time. <laughs> amazing and then there's the other really popular thing to do obviously in, in Positano is to do the uh, path of the gods hike and so this is, um, it's about, I think it's about 12 kilometres. I haven't done it myself and it's a long, but it's very popular. I have some friends that have done it. Basically, this is a very, it's a long day hike that you want to start pretty early in the morning. And it starts at the village of Bomerano and winds its way down to Nochel, which is just above Positano. And it's a beautiful walk that follows um, some old mule trails. And on the clear day, you can see as far as Capri. So it takes around three to four hours. And you probably, as I said, want to do that in the morning because it gets pretty hot in summer. Yeah, it's and, very hot. Yeah. And it's about seven kilometers long. So, and at the end, <laughs> you think, oh, I've made it to the end. But there's another 1,600 steps that take you down to Arienzo Beach at the end. So just prepare yourself. But I think, you know, it's one of those must, if you're into hiking, it's one of those ones you just have to do and tick off your list because it's a very special view along that coastline. I haven't done it myself, but I have friends that have done it and they absolutely loved it. So what about other things to do in in Positano, Josie? What were your favourite things? For me, it's about walking around, finding a beautiful restaurant and um, also something that, I mean, now if I close my eyes and I picture, it's all of that floral. Mm. Um, It's the vine floral that hangs over the the trellises that they have as you walk down the pathway. and Oh, um, the wisteria. Oh, the wisteria. It's amazing and the smell. And then in between that you get wafts of 
pasta sauce and pizza and then as you walk down um there's lots of vendors and um crafts so there's a lot of crafting um something we need, probably need to talk about is the artisan work that they do throughout the amalfi coast yes they do a lot of ceramics those beautiful majolica ceramics which are the colorful uh different you know the very colorful blues yellows ceramics they make a lot of those particularly in ravello actually also soaps yeah. And the sandals, bespoke sandals. And also um, something we, my husband loves is the limoncello. Oh, so, oh I love it too. <laughs> um, we, and we'll get to Ravello, but we bought ceramics and had them shipped home from Ravello. So definitely can do that. Um, and they're ceramics that you just wouldn't get anywhere else in the world. Yes, they're very unique. And so it's one of those things that it's if you're looking for a beautiful souvenir, then – you know the ceramics are some of the best but obviously they're not um they're, they're not on the cheap side but they're very they're artisan made and people will comment on them definitely if they see them at your place because they are definitely beautiful but positano is an excellent place to go shopping it's there's a lot of really beautiful boutiques there and if you're into shopping do that and again the sandals because you can get the bejeweled sandals oh, they're beautiful and, and you can have them made especially for you you can design them yourselves and they're they're very beautiful leather sandals sandals that you again people will comment on them when they see you so the next uh town main town along the coast is amalfi and that's actually where we stayed last time uh and the reason was because our children were pretty small and we didn't want to be going up and down very steep hills with them but it's really fun amalfi i really liked it and it's got some secret tunnels in i don't know that yeah, it's you, amazing yeah yeah and you can just go in and out of these secret tunnels that are built into the cliff face there and there's a beautiful cathedral there oh, the cathedral's beautiful i think as you come up those stairs and and then as you come into that sort of area that, that little piazza that they have and then you look up to the right there's that cathedral it's amazing yeah it's all you know got gold mosaics on the outside and it's beautiful you can go right down into the crypt actually it's a very interesting church and again it's got the majolica tiles on on the roof there so it's very uh, uh, evocative of the Amalfi Coast and just down from there is one of my favorite places actually that you can walk along the cliff edge to get there is Atrani and that's a a little town that's just in within walking distance of Amalfi and it's so cute and it's like got this really tiny beach but all lined up with um beach um umbrellas and chairs etc and it's it's a really beautiful village that it's one of those places you can't miss really don't you think Katie that you you know the more you go the more you're experienced because I mean your experience is different to my experience depending on where you stay and I think this is the beauty of what we're trying to explain to everyone is that you know we we can tell you but it's just an amazing place to go and then for me we then went from Amalfi up to Ravello um and that is just beautiful and you can't really beat the views from up there no. did you go to Villa Rufolo yes Villa Rufolo and then we walked around because I was actually on the hunt for ceramics so that was um that was something that we did but it the view and it was actually something it was really interesting I wasn't aware of how uh, it wasn't somewhere I wanted to go, but then when I got there, I'm like, wow, this is beautiful. I would actually even stay there. I, I think so. And there's some amazing places that you can stay up there, such as Villa Simbrone, which has got the um, a very famous view with the statues yeah. think, uh, up there. So you can even have uh, dinner or lunch up there. But the Villa Rufolo is really lovely because it's got these gorgeous gardens, which you can wander around. It's actually the ruins of a villa. It's it's. They're kind of restoring some of it, but the gardens are actually actually spectacular, and it's it's well worth having a, a look around there. In, in certain times of the year, they have concerts up there too, so I think that'd be a pretty amazing backdrop to to watch a concert. Yeah, we just um, grabbed a I don't know what we drink, and then we sort of wandered around and then just sat in the gardens. It was actually amazing. I, I have to say that really surprised me. It was it was one of those things where you go you'd, you'd heard so much. I'd heard so much around Sorrento and Positano and Capri and Amalfi. But Ravello was actually that hidden gem that I'm like, wow, this is something I would probably come and stay here as well um, as an option. Well, there's so many little towns like that along the coast. And I think people do flock to these main ones. But I'd like to tell you about a few other smaller ones that you might want to consider staying in. And I've actually 
you're not going to be surprised about this. I do have an article about that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there is um, some places that are probably better for people depending on their interests. So Praiano, which is near to Positano, is a small village and a lot of people like staying there for its more local feel. So a lot of Italians will uh, have their vacations in Praiano and it's within ta- easy taxi and taxi boat distance from Positano and it's just it's a bit more laid back than Positano and, and a lot less um, – busy. The other one is Maori, which is unusually for the Amalfi Coast has a sandy beach. So that's a really good one for families to have a look at. So I I would take a look there. And the other one, which is more of a day trip, we probably wouldn't stay there is Fiore. And that has got a fjord, which you normally associate with places like Norway or New Zealand, but this is a, like a, an inlet and it's covered by this bridge. And at certain times of the year, they have um, bridge diving competitions. So, oh, wow. Yeah, so these, I would say crazy, local guys uh, and people from all around the world that are into these cliff diving competitions dive off the bridge into the fjord because it's very deep and – yeah, there's competitions around it, but it's it's a very spectacular place and it's one of those beautiful places that you can only find on the Amalfi Coast. Well, that's amazing. Now, Katie, how do you get around? Well, I think it really depends on the time time of year. So we went in April and we last time and we had a car. So, okay. and it, we really needed a car actually because the ferries weren't working. They don't really go until, start until May. So the ferries go from May till October. And if, so if the and then our only other option is really bus or we had a car. Now my husband is a very confident driver and we live very close to a very similar road actually in Australia which is called the Great Ocean Road. So we're used to driving these windy roads. However, it is a bit narrower. <laughs> so um so look, I think if you want to drive the Amalfi Coast it's definitely possible, but you need to be a confident driver and be aware that it is a narrow yeah. winding road. I'm uh, look, I we've spoken about this. I, I I drive, I'm happy to drive in certain places, but that it is not somewhere that I'm comfortable with and I've been three times to um the Amalfi Coast and every time I get onto that road I do get a little bit of heart palpitations. Um, so for me, what we did last time was we, in Sorrento, there's lots of tourist areas where you can go and find a driver um, and they um, will drive you and it's really, it's a private sort of thing. Um, they will take you to each town, which is what we did. And then they ask you how long you want to stay. Um, and they even, sometimes it was funny, my husband tells his story. We ended up in Amalfi and the gentleman, the driver said, oh, would you like to have some lunch? And we thought, oh, here we go. Um, and we said, yeah, we'll, we'll have some. And I said to my husband, did you want to do lunch? And we thought we'd agree. And I have to tell you, it was one of the best restaurants that we've ever had lunch at um overlooking uh the water it was um, the food was amazing the limoncello was the best limoncello we've had but is it that it was the best or was it because we were all together as a family and it was the memories that we were making so um that's the way we did it because we felt i wasn't confident to drive I've heard that the buses in summer can get very, very um, – from the girls when they've travelled as a group of girls, they're trying to save money, so they've tried to do the buses and it can become quite uh, packed and very difficult to get on. So, again, I think for us that was what we did, but it really depends on your budget and how – and if you had the time and if you don't mind. And I think the roads do get very busy, as we mentioned earlier, and so your option in summer is also to use the ferries, which I think is a really good idea. Yeah. If and. So for me, I don't get seasick. So if, and my idea of heaven is actually going on the sea. So for me, that that sounds like a great way to go. The other one you could do, you can also rent a private boat, oh, or there's boat a, tours. Yeah. And I think there's no better way to see that that coastline than from the water. It's just it's an amazing. It's it's one of the world's wonders, really. I, I should be. I think it's listed actually. It is. It's actually on the UNESCO World Heritage list. It's absolutely stunning, and you would never ever regret going to the Amalfi Coast, I don't think. No, I don't think. And and something else to note, what it looks – each of these cities, what they look like during the day is very different to what they look like at night. It comes alive. So Sorrento at night, everyone goes for their passeggiata, they go out for have their dinner, then they'll go have their gelato. So it's an amazing feel and everyone – it's it's like you, you walk the, the main road of every – 
town or city and uh, it, it is a it is a cultural thing they do and I think um, in the middle of summer when it's just beautiful and the sun's going down and everyone's gone back they've all cleaned themselves up from being at the beach or whatever they've done during the day and everyone's all dressed up and and everyone's ready for dinner and it's just an amazing atmosphere at night as well. And did you know Josie in Positano they have a famous nightclub there called Music on the Rocks and it's actually built into a cave this nightclub and you can go there and um, it, I think that starts at one o'clock in the morning but by that stage I'm well and truly asleep these days but I think for all, uh, the people that like uh, the night hours that like to go and have a bit of a party that would be a, quite an incredible experience I imagine to go and go to the nightclub inside the cliffs. Oh, so I love talking. I could talk about this forever, but <laughs> uh, I think we do need to sort of sum it up. But really, if you're going to the Amalfi Coast, how long do you reckon you should stay there, Josie? Four to five days. Oh, at least. I oh, know. <laughs> uh, but, but again, when we look at itineraries and, and, you know, we've discussed that or, we, you know, again, you need to fit in you know, what, what you can in that time. So, um, so have a, have a look, have a think. I mean, if it's your first time or you're going to go back, definitely minimum, you know, three to four nights. Um, but if you can stretch it to six to seven nights, it's amazing. Um, so really, are you excited about the Malfi coast? Um, if there's any, if you have questions about the trip, come over to our free Italy travel planning Facebook group where you get lots of suggestions of planning um, an amazing stay there. Oh, look, you've got to go. You just have to go. Anyway, I've also put a link to our city guide for Positano and the towns of the Amalfi Coast in our show notes to help you plan your time there. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast for all the latest episodes. And if you have some time, we'd love it if you gave us a rating or a review. Thanks for listening and ciao for now. Ciao for now.